I am doing a little bit of a photographic experiment and I thought it would be a bit of fun to make a short video and bring you along with me. So we've been growing seedlings from so for example this nasturtium plant we've been growing them to put out in the garden later but we've been starting them off in these little trays on the windowsill here because it's nice and sunny and it's warm and uh, they grow really fast. You can't see the movement and the growth, but every time you come back and have a look, it's grown a little bit more. So I thought that would be absolutely ideal candidate for a little bit of time lapse. So I wanted to set up a time lapse over a day or maybe even longer, watching some of these seedlings growing. Now, in order to do that, one of the immediate problems I've faced is that I have a Nikon Z series camera and they are really power hungry. So one of the things I needed to be able to even try doing this is an external power solution. And I actually bought myself the Nikon um, external mains adapter with a sort of a dummy battery that goes into the battery compartment of the camera. And that's great because now this camera can keep working all day. No problem at all. If I was using these little guys, the standard batteries, I probably would only get maybe three hours, maybe four tops out of this. And then I'd have to change the battery or more likely what would happen is that it would run out of battery, I wouldn't notice, and I'd have an horrible big gap in my time lapse, which has definitely happened in the past. So the other thing I need in order to do this time lapse is some form of extra lighting to kind of light the subject. And so I've got myself one of these uh, ring flash units. It's a fairly cheap one from Amazon from a company called Newer. And um, yeah, they make quite a lot of sort of basic camera kit. It's pretty good, except it does have one limitation in my mind, which is that you can't plug it into the mains. And I'm actually, I've got a few bits and pieces on order to modify it myself, put an extra spur cable in there that comes out that I can actually plug in a six volt power supply to. But they haven't arrived yet, and the seedlings have started coming up, so We've got to get started. So I'm running this on battery and we'll just have to see if it works. So the plan is for this first experiment, at least I'm just going to focus in on this one seedling. I've got my 105 millimeter macro lens on here on the Z6 with an adapter. And I've got the settings at a half second exposure with the ring flash going off. It's not all that powerful, but it's kind of a bit more than ambient and uh, I've got the ISO set at base not got anything on automatic I've got the VR turned off on the lens I've got the autofocus turned off so everything should be manual oh if I didn't say the aperture just now f11 to get a little bit more depth of field I might have to change that to something more like f14 because obviously working close like this to a macro lens with something that's going to kind of move about as it grows um, F11 might still be too narrow. Now, background is very, very important in macro photography. Um, and in the case of something like this, where we're set up in the house, um, it's easy to change the background because I can just put something in the way behind it. And what I've done is I've got this chair here and I've got a bit of black fabric as a backdrop. And that sort of ends up as being a kind of out of focus gray in the test images I've taken. I might try some different colors. For example, there's a bright blue throw on the back of the rug that's behind, behind the camera that's recording me just now. And I might try that later on because that might be kind of make an interesting color contrast to the green of the seedling against the blue. So I might try that later. Um, I'm using the camera's inbuilt intervalometer um, so it's going to take a photograph every five minutes and I've set the number of frames to the maximum that I can. So 9,999 
I'm not going to take that many frames. I'm just setting that so that there's no question. It will just continue until I tell it not to. Um, and that's it, really. There's one um, seedling that's quite established here. This got a front runner. There's a second one here that's starting to come up and the others haven't really emerged yet. So my thinking is that I'll have a go today with this little guy and then I probably get to have some more attempt over the next few days on some of these others as they start to come up and I'll be learning along the way because of course yeah this is quite a complicated uh, thing to set up I've never done this before a macro time lapse so it's new to me I'm just feeling my way and just having a go and uh, yeah we'll get it started and uh, see what we get This is now about a day after we set this going and uh, this little guy has grown tremendously over that time. So we've been recording all of yesterday afternoon, over the night and sort of well into the next day, so today, and I'm really hopeful that there's some going to be some really nice uh, footage on here that I can turn into a little time lapse. So in all of that time, I've not really made any changes to the setup, except a couple of times I've come and I've changed the focal plane just using live view and manual focus because this little guy has been growing this way towards the sun and so it's been going towards the camera and the focal plane, even at uh, f11, which I changed down to for getting a little bit more light, even at that aperture, the uh, a plane is really really narrow so the depth of field is really really narrow and so if I'd not done that what would happen is that the leaves and the sort of interesting part where everything's going to go in on would have grown out of focus and that wouldn't have looked as good I hope I haven't seen it yet but I hope that by doing that I've kept everything in focus so rather than stop now I'm going to keep going um, I'm going to take the memory card out uh, of the camera now and take these images up and have a look on the computer. But I'm going to leave it all set up and I'll leave it running. And I'm going to turn the tray around a little bit because some of these other seedlings, some of these other nasturtiums are starting to come up as well. And what I thought would be really cool would be to have this guy still as the main subject of the time lapse in the video but have these guys starting to come up in the background as well. And so I'll turn it around, sort of reframe and set it going again, probably for at least another day, maybe even longer, we shall see. And actually, if I get really ambitious, I might also try turning the, uh, the tray with the, uh, with the seedlings on using my motion control platform and just have it subtly moving while recording the time lapse, but that's a bit ambitious. I'll have to think about whether I can actually set that up in a way that's safe for the plants so I don't knock them on the floor because I'll be in big trouble if I do that. So the um, ring flash has actually been really good. I expected that it would run out of battery because it's got four AA batteries and it's been running for 24 hours and I I was uh, skeptical as to whether it would keep going without any issues, but it's been great. Um, it's still reporting that it has plenty of battery life left on its little LCD screen. So uh, I'm just keep going with that. So anyway, I think this is probably where I'll end the vlogging part of this short video and the rest will be whatever time-lapse footage I'm able to put together with these little nasturtiums um, over the next few days. So if you're seeing this on YouTube, 
then it must have worked out to some extent and what you're going to see next is some time-lapse footage over a few days of nasturtium seedlings growing. Um, I hope you enjoy that. Um, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.